As a kid, my mom had a very large garden. And so my mom thought it would be good for me to play in the dirt, weed the garden, and really help her get close to agriculture. My mom would have the neighbor bring up manure from the dairy farm and spread once a year on my mom's garden. During the winter time when we heated our house with wood, I would take the ashes from the stove and spread them on the garden as the precursor to what we now call biochar. But the earth and the ground has changed a lot since I was a kid and our soils are now under attack. We have water erosion happening on our soils. We have wind erosion. We're losing thousands of pounds of soil down from wind and water. Climate change has dramatically affected agriculture. We are having severe climate conditions that we have not seen in the past. We are having areas that are undergoing severe droughts when there used to be plentiful water. We have areas that are seeing extreme amounts of water where they did not see that before. We have weed pressures because when a field is left fallow over the winter time in the spring, the weeds are the first thing that comes up. We then have to treat these fields with herbicides to break down the weed pressure. And all of these things are creating an attack on our soils. Our soils are not healthy anymore and they really need to get that health back. Our soils are living organisms and they have microbes and other things inside them to really create a healthy biome. And we've created a situation now on a lot of our agriculture where the biome is not healthy anymore. This is an example of a microscopic picture of a biome of the soils to show you all the different living organisms that are actually in the soil biome. We need to start cover cropping on a large scale. Right now, in modern agriculture, we plant a crop, harvest it, and let the field grow fallow until the next season when we spray the herbicide on it to break down the weed pressure, plant another crop, and then do it over and over again. This is decreasing the soil carbon storage of all of our soils. We need to change this. We need to change it moving forward. We need to be able to stop doing these idle seasons and really be able to gain agriculture such that we are cover cropping and being able to store carbon in our soils instead of putting it into our ocean and air where it's doing harm. You can't over carbonize soils. You can over carbonize the air and the oceans. So how do we do this? We plant a cover crop in between these. The cover crop holds the soils, makes the soils healthy because there is something there. There is root biomass, there is above ground biomass, there is a biome for nutrients to be able to create healthy soils. And through this, we are continuing to increase the level of carbon that's in our soils, taking it out of the atmosphere and decreasing the amount of CO2 in our atmosphere, thus taking the pressure off the CO2 going into our oceans. People say, well, wait a second, if you're cover cropping, you're stealing nutrients or water from the next crop, and that is just a total fallacy. Cover cropping actually helps open up the pan of soil that typically has been hard compacted when it goes into a fallow rotation, and the water actually can seep into the ground. Here's a good example of that. On the right-hand side, a cover, cover crop, which is, was harvested. On the left-hand side, no cover crop, water erosion, the water runs off, 
instead of the water going down into the pan of the soil and being there for the reservoir for the next crop. Cover cropping is the way to bring soil health back to our agricultural soils. This is a picture of Carinata. As you can see, the roots go very deep into the soil. These deep roots are what really break up that hard, compact pan of soil, being able to enable the spring rains to go down into the soil, be able to take the nutrients with it and create also a healthy biome deep into the soil. These are the type of cover crops we really need to move forward with and be able to incentivize. These are the type that are being commercially grown in Argentina today. This is an example of biodiversity because Carinata or other cover crops are grown when there's nothing else growing. And so we have actually beekeepers who actually bring their hives out to our fields during the flowering time of the season, which is when nothing else is growing and be able to have them be healthy in the biodiversity and the difference in these flowers taking hold during the off season or as a cover crop. This is in hectares, if you're more of an English bent, if you want it in acres, but this shows three regions, just three regions in the world. And this is where we are agriculturally harvesting crops today. North America, we have about 60 million hectares, Central America 65 and Europe 45. For a total of about 172 million hectares of actual agricultural land, this is not your Walmart parking lot, this is not your high rise, this is not your downtown city block. These are actually areas of agriculture today. Today, we harvest and cover crop less than 1% of this area, these three areas. This is an area where we can really be able to gain huge amounts of volume to decarbonize the liquid transportation sector by getting cover crops into these areas. It will not affect food production because it's done in between food cropping and be able to gain that volume to decarbonize our liquid transportation as well as our hard to decarbonize sectors such as marine and aviation. And so when we look at this, if we increase this area from 1%, which it is today, to 10 to 15%, we are going to create double the amount of veg oil that we're getting today from just soybean oil in the globe. This is really the potential for cover cropping. And this is where we need to move to as a society to really be able to decarbonize. The other thing to notice here is that the U.S. announced the grand challenge around sustainable aviation fuel. And they put the marker at 3 billion gallons by 2030. If you took the Southeast United States, which right now, according to the USDA statistics, we cover crop about less than 5% of that. If you increase the five to 15%, so an increase of 10%, you would produce 3 billion gallons of oil to meet the sustainable aviation grand challenge. You could do this very quickly and be able to meet that 2030 goal. These are the power of cover cropping this is what we need to move to, and this is how we can decarbonize our sector. This is commercial reality. This is a field less than six months ago in Argentina where we have a commercial program established and thriving. And this is where we really need to move to as a society, as a world, to be able to do cover cropping at large scale to be able to provide the veg oil, low cost, non-food, non-GMO into the liquid fuel transportation pool to really decarbonize this hard to decarbonize sectors 
such as sustainable aviation fuel and marine. And with that, I'd like to show you a short video that really talks in depth about our program down in Argentina. <laughs> 